Hi, it's Carol Salter here. It's been a while since I've done a podcast and done one of my readings, but today I'm doing a short one and I have some exciting news as well that I couldn't wait to share. As you know, I am chair of a local writing group called Inspirations and the clue is wherever the book is on the book. You may be aware if you've heard of us before that we produce anthologies with our members work every year. Uh, we started off with red then we moved on to orange uh, and then yellow which I'm reading from today and last year was green and this year it's blue and they are in fact all colours of the rainbow so the next one we're about to do if you want to join us is called indigo um, so we're excited about that but more than that I am totally excited because the National Association of Writers Group has recognised our Green Anthology as an award-winning book and we have received not only a certificate advising us that inspirations are the winners for this year but also, if I can do this on live TV or whatever, hold on, this way, <laughs> no I can't, that way um, we've also received a silver platter for our anthology which is something pretty amazing and I can't wait to hand that to our members and uh, get a piece in the paper hopefully for that so you can buy all our anthologies online on Amazon on Kindle or on hard copy via my e-store if you can't get them on Amazon um, and today as I said I'm going to read my second story out of yellow it is quite a sombre piece, but thankfully it's quite short. So let's see how we go. Life isn't fair. Tell me everything, he murmured. And she did. She told him about her childhood, the place where love didn't live or even visit. The nights of hunger, her stomach growling with unhappiness the black eyes and the broken bones. She fell down the stairs, they told the authorities. Such a clumsy child, they falsely testified, fixed smiles glued on their empty faces. The sadness in her heart ached like a bad tooth. If she could have extracted the offending organ, she would have yanked it from her body with rusty pliers. She'd learnt Life isn't fair, it's unbearable. On the nights she was left alone to sleep, she huddled behind the still warm stove in the kitchen, hoping they wouldn't find her, an unloved, forgotten scrap of humanity. Tears came unbidden, tracking down her gaunt cheeks to drop on her threadbare tunic. No point wiping them away, more would follow come the morning. She told him of the endless work, the beatings, the days they decided these things alone weren't enough punishment. They threw her bodily down the stairs, leaving her in the blackness that smelt of water and mould and death. How long? Until they decided so. She'd sucked water off the wet brickwork, chewed anything she could find. Newspapers were the best. If she imagined real hard, they could be porridge, providing she torn the pieces into small enough bits first. She stopped talking. He waited. One day I dropped a teacup. She looked up searching his face for scorn. There was none. Wringing her hand, she continued. It was the first time, but not the last. He maintained his professional composure, barely. His fingers gripped the arms of his chair till the tips turned white, giving away his raging emotions of compassion, injustice and stark horror at her revelations. 
She glanced out of the window over his shoulder and smiled as the sun peeked out from dull clouds like a frightened child from behind the curtains. The vivid yellow orb had been her continual companion. Maybe things will be better from today, she reflected, smiling over at the reporter. So that's quite a tense, sad scene. Um, I, I'd say I hope you enjoyed it. I don't know if that's the right word. Um, I hope you understood it. Until next time, goodbye.